Okay, guys, I'm in Yokohama, which is right next to uh, Tokyo, and there is the uh, exposition called CP Plus, which is all about cameras, camera equipment, camera tech, lenses, etc., etc. And there are booths also for uh, telescopes, astrophotography, etc. I also want to look at Cytron Japan, uh, which is one of the, the dealers of astrophotography equipment here in Japan, but they're also starting to make their own stuff, so I want to see what's there. Okay, we're now at the booth of Cytron Japan. Cytron Japan is actually the seller in Japan for a lot of uh, equipment. It used to be the Celestron dealer for quite a while, but now it's, it went to Vixen. It's always some fun stuff, but we're getting some interesting stuff here, which is a strain wave gear mount, which apparently I asked, they're not planning on releasing super soon, uh, but they will at some point. And then there is this telescope. And this telescope, if uh, we look at it, it looks like a very standard uh, thing. It's going to be fairly expensive, I'm told, around 500,000 yen, which is what, like 3,000, a bit more uh, US dollars. Uh, but it's going to be an F5 telescope with a focal length of 375 millimeters for an aperture of 75 uh, millimeters. And this one, they're planning to release it like in one or two months, something like that. What's very interesting is the specs. So the specs here, especially if we look at the spot diagram, they're pretty insane. If we look at the, the right hand side here, 22 millimeters away from the center, so that's full frame. They, apparently the star shape is only 1.31 micrometer, which means that for small stars on cameras like even the 585 sensor with its um, 2.9 micron pixels, they would fit on one pixel, which would make this uh, telescope here insanely sharp. Maybe even, who knows, sharper than something like the uh, ASCAR SQA. 70 or SQA85, which are probably the, 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 the most likely competitors that we can see. Otherwise, the scope itself looks very standard. We have the normal focuser with two speed on the other side. So two speed on the other side with the fine focusing that is available. Pardon? Okay, and we have some very interesting stuff with the mounts going on as well here. So the mount is fairly large, much larger than what I'm used to for something like a ZWEN5, but kind of the same uh, amount of volume as something like the Skywatcher 150i, which I've shown on the channel before. And uh, this mount, what is very interesting, at least based on my discussion with them, and is that it can support something like 25 kilograms of uh, payloads if you use a counterweight, which based on other uh, harmonic drive mounts, it would likely mean that without the counterweight, you would be at 20 kilograms. So something very similar like the uh, WD-20, for instance. So a bit more payload capacity than say the ZWAM5, which would be one of the competitors. Now the mount itself is not going to be sold for a while also. It's Cytron Japan. I don't know what the original brand is or whether they're going to sell it outside of Japan. I have no idea, but it's very interesting. But I am quite excited about the telescope. Again, I'm not sure what brand it's going to be, if it's going to be sold outside of Japan, what it's going to be. The name is the SJH75UF, right? But that's very exciting, especially based on like the diagrams that I see, uh, which seem to be fairly insane. So <laughs> we'll see what we, uh, what we get. Okay, now we have another one still at Cytron Japan. Uh, this is already available on the market. I didn't even know that, but now I kind of want to buy it. It's a solar telescope. It's proper H-alpha at the front, and apparently the spec are for less than 0 0.6, 0 0.6 angstroms, which is almost like a double stack, kind of like in between double stack and single stack, but inside it's a normal telescope. So uh, this is a 40 millimeter um, diameter solar filter at the front for H-alpha, which means it's similar to something like the uh, Coronado, what, what was the name, the, the personal solar telescope, the PST, or something from the Lunt uh, type of things. And it can be used as well as a standard telescope. So if, so if I remove the front like this, underneath we have an 80 millimeter lens for a standard 80 millimeters uh, refractor that you can use as is. I believe it's just a simple doublet, very likely, uh, but so nothing to write home about, but it is available. On the back end side, if we look at the uh, diagonal, the, the diagonal has the uh, blocking filter, which if we remove the eyepiece and we look inside, we see it's a very small diameter, probably six to eight millimeters, something like that. But it should work with planetary cameras as well for imaging. And that whole thing there, which again, it's available right now, and I had no idea about it, uh, with the finder and all of that stuff, is apparently 
uh, on in yen, it's 154,000 yen, which is roughly 1,000 US dollars. For an H Alpha solar telescope, it's actually not bad at all. Although I do remember there is a Skywatcher solar telescope that's very cheap these days. I don't have the price in my head right now, but it's something that uh, I could look at as well. I wonder if it's going to be competitive with that or better than that. But this is something that I did not know about, uh, but it's available and that's pretty cool to see. While I'm here, by the way, next to me, we have the, uh, the, the, the mystery telescope. This is an F2 tiny telescope. Like if I put my hand next to it, it's like really tiny. And this is the uh, Skywatcher HSC125, which is currently, as far as I know, not available in the United States. And if we look at the front, it is cute as pie. We have this 125 millimeters diameter uh, aperture with uh, a focal length of 250 millimeters for super fast F2. And of course, because of that, uh, unless we want a huge central obstruction, we have to use small cameras. Although apparently in Japan, some people have used this with cooled astrophotography cameras whose diameter is at least 78 millimeters. Uh, so maybe it's something that I should check because this is available for sale right now in Japan. And I'm wondering whether I should just buy one for the channel to review. If you think I should, let me know down in the comments, by the way, uh, to let me know what I should be buying and reviewing. The focus, something I didn't uh, know exactly where the focus was going on, is actually this re little ring inside. There's a, a ring right there that allows me to change the focus of this telescope. The lens hood itself as well can be removed and unscrewed. And at the back here, we have the collimation screws. So it seems we only have collimation at the mirror level. That said, uh, apparently they are thinking about having an add-on or a different version where the focus would be done by moving the primary mirror, just like with something like Hyperstar C6 or Raza telescopes. And that would make it possible to install an electronic focus on there. Uh, so it would change things if they did do that kind of change. So that's really cool to see. Okay, so I'm out of the exhibit and I talked briefly actually to the designer of the site from Japan telescope. And this is apparently uh, an in-house telescope, so it's not from another manufacturer, it is from Citron Japan. And uh, they are planning on selling it ab abroad in the end. And I'm actually really excited to uh, see it because talking to the optical designer, used to be a designer of those uh, super cool telescopes at Pentax, right? So a really veteran of the market. And he was, I asked him several questions about like, uh, okay, you have an insane spot diagram. And uh, how will you make sure that you get, you know, good star shapes, even with, you know, manufacturing tolerances, that kind of stuff. And he told me that uh, basically uh, the, uh, the star shapes are so small, as we saw, like 22 millimeters away from the center. It was something like 1.31 microns in terms of the star, star size that uh, even with um, some, you know, equipment lottery and some small manufacturing tolerances, they would still be within the limits of the airy disk. And when you're within the airy disk, whether you're super sharp or super small or just at the limit of the airy disk, as long as you're inside, it's the same thing because the airy disk is basically about when it comes to like diffraction and, uh, and the waves of light and all that kind of fun stuff. So it, it's a valid answer, right? Basically, they're making it so that even with manufacturing tolerances, we'll keep at a very small, like within the airy disk. So everything's going to be fine. And that's a super, super cool answer. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually really, really excited by the scope. And uh, I did ask them whether they could uh, consider a loaner for me to review and then send back to them once it becomes available abroad. And uh, yeah, that's probably one of my highlights of the um, of the products that I've seen. Anyway, that's it for the Citron stuff. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel and uh, you can just like this video, it really helps out. Let us know in the comments what you think of this new telescope, of this new mount, of this solar telescope, etc. I'll be super interested to hear about it. And if you want to support the, the channel directly at no cost to you and you're planning on buying anything from Agena, High Point Scientific, First Light Optics, etc. If you do so after using the links I have down in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. And if you want to become a sponsor of this channel and actually sponsor my uh, work on the channel, you may consider joining the channel as a member. It's the join button next to the subscribe button or join as a Patreon supporter. And again, the link is down in the description. My channel members, my Patreon supporters, I say it every time you make this possible. Thank you so much for your support. Anyway, more important than all of that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.